Hello, I'm Alison, Chief Exec of Accelerate. This video is part of a series on how we optimise compression for the benefit of our patients and staff by reducing our activity. This video is about making sure that we have really early intervention for patients with lymphorrhea, with wet legs, with erosions and sores, and make sure that they get into compression early, something that's effective and useful. So we have a volunteer, Faith, and I'm assuming that Faith has come to you because she's got lymphorrhea, her leg is very swollen, it's very sore, she may even have cardiac failure, but her, her leg is leaking and dripping, and she's got the beginning of erosions and sores, maybe even wet eczema. So what do we do? How do we make sure that what we're doing is going to be useful for Faith and to dry her legs up as soon as possible? So of course you will dress the leg as you would normally. One key product that we often forget about is paste bandage. So I have here a Visca paste bandage. You could have Zip Sock or you could use Icta paste. This is a very good product. Often people think it's very old fashioned but what's really useful about it is that it provides a locking to the lower leg and helps to reduce the edema alongside the bandages and compression therapy. Assuming that maybe you can't get an ABPI, this is a really excellent first line treatment for treating lymphorrhea in the community. So I've got gloves on, but the apron was way too rustly for the video camera. So we're just assuming that I'm carrying out the right infection control procedure. So we're assuming that Faith has a problem here. So the first thing you do is get out your paste bandage. This can be really soothing for people. It's cool and it goes on very nicely. If someone has neuropathic pain, sometimes this is really lovely. So the important thing is to wrap it from the toe up to the knee. But I find a little loop like that is useful because as you can see, I'm going up that way. So I can just redirect the bandage down so that I can do a really nice spiral. So if Faith, if you bend your knee, that's lovely. And so you can see that you can put it on a little bit of tension as you're pulling around. And you can see that it grabs the calf really nicely. And so you make sure that you've got the whole of the calf in so that you've got compression right the way up. And you can see here that I've got quite a lot. So for a very wide leg, you should have enough. Rarely would you need to have an extra layer of um, visca paste. So you can put that directly onto the wound and you've already got a sort of a firmness, a stiffness to the compression system that you're going to be putting on. Now if you're worried about compression because they may have heart failure and you want to try something out um, with this patient, this may be the first time you've seen them, then there's what, what we can do is apply a wadding layer and we can do two lots of crepe bandaging to provide a stiffness that will be um, a step along the way to managing them successfully with compression, but it's a starter for 10. So the important thing to remember when you're um, wrapping up a leg that has lymphorrhea is that obviously you've got a lot of wetness and leakage. This will help to provide some stiffness to the bandage regime and then you need to find um, a dressing that's suitable. This may be too small, but it's just for demonstration purposes. You might want to put one all the way around the leg. However, let's just remember that the wider the leg, the less compression the limb receives from the bandages. So let's not overdo it, just put on what's required. The second thing that you'd be using is some type of wadding layer. And so usually we would just do wadding from the toes. And again, Faith doesn't have a large foot, so you can go straight to the ankle, but this is dependent on the foot length. 
And what you don't want to do is over pull that. You can see that I can make it more narrow if I over pull it. So just put it on, let it just fall onto the leg and you're just rolling it around gently. And so the important thing about a wadding layer is that it's protecting the bony prominences, the Achilles and the dorsum of the foot. Now, I've got a little bit spare here. So you may think that you know that you've got a problem down here and you may just want to put a little bit more. Maybe the patient has had pain at her ankle beforehand. So you may just want to um, put a little bit extra there, but that is probably fine with a decent dressing on. This is when you can't apply um, compression because you're worried about the presence of ischemia or heart failure, that you just want to feel confident in what you're doing. So as a one-off, you may just apply double crepe. So with the crepe bandage, it's not a compression bandage, but you want to apply some stiffness. So there's different ways that you can do this. You can either do two layers of um, crepe in opposite direction. And I'm putting this on fairly firmly because I know that one, the bandage loosens off, but also I know that the lymphorrhea is only because of the swelling. And if you don't understand the cause of the lymphedema and the lymphorrhea, then you won't be able to stop it or manage it. So we know that lymphorrhea is always due to uncontrolled swelling. So uncontrolled swelling must have compression. But if you've got heart failure, you may be a bit apprehensive of that. So you may just want to put crepe on just to give yourself confidence on the first occasion. So what I would be doing is doing another bandage the opposite direction. So we've got a really sort of firm bandage that is the first line for someone that has extensive lymphorrhea. As I mentioned in a previous video, we can now apply light compression without an ABPI. That means a Doppler is not possible, but we can do a first line compression layer. So what we can do is apply a light compression bandage. Now these come in several forms. This one is Pro 4 3, there's K plus and others. So where we've got lymphorrhea or a new wound and we've got edema, then bandaging is our next step. Maybe there's too much exudate to be able to use safely a wrap or a first line hosiery, class one hosiery. So what we have here is a Pro 4 3 and this applies moderate compression or light compression depending on the width of the leg. So here I will be putting compression on Faith. So Faith, what you need to do is to put your, that's lovely. So we flex someone's foot or we say toes to nose, but we flex it back. Faith has got a very good mobile ankle, so she's less likely to have problems than others. And so what I'm doing is putting a firm K plus or a Pro 4 3 on her leg. And this is in a figure of eight. If you bend your knee again, lovely, that's fine. You can relax your foot, Faith. And so what you're trying to do is to apply light compression to the leg. And as you're going up, what we need to make sure is that we're applying effective compression. Now, what we do is to check that we've got some tension with two fingers underneath an overlap of bandaging. So we know that she's getting light compression. So this regime with a visca paste or a paste bandage, wadding, crepe, and a figure of eight, K plus or Pro 4 3 type 3A bandage is a really good first line management for lymphedema with lymphorrhea or a new wound um, such as a laceration or skin tear that's exuding quite a lot. This is the first step. But we know that compression at a mild amount will not heal many wounds. We know that it may be useful as a first line. 
but we need to be able to ramp up to apply the right compression. This is also a very useful regime using a type 3A bandage for those with vasculitis where you've got significant pain and say sickle cell ulceration and so on or when they've got neuropathic type pain. This type of bandage is very conforming and has less stiffness associated than we say with a short stretch bandage. So this is a very comfortable first step for many patients. But what you must remember is to not leave it at this level. It's really important to start to ramp up the compression when you can. And that if someone is in this level of bandaging for many weeks and they're not getting anywhere, their wound is still there, then you've got to review the compression. This compression will not be optimal for many patients, but it's a good start. Mm -hmm.